As far as rents are concerned, for the people that are property owners, you need to think in terms of what's going on with fuel as to what's <coughs> happening to the tenants that are in your building. Right now, most people are paying on credit card when they go to the pump, and they've been paying, and they're saving $20. When you drive a truck like I drive, you save $30. You do notice that. But a lot of people have not been buying a full tank of gas. I mean, if the, the median income in Knoxville uh, independent income is about $20,000. So the average person working in the community is probably not buying a full tank of gas. So it's going to take them, so they're, they're, the money's going in on a credit card, and their bill is just less. They've got a little bit more spending capacity, but they don't really realize it. I mean, you just don't. About January or February, people are going to begin to realize they've got an extra $100 a month, an extra $200 a month. <laughs> If you're in the lawn mowing business or any business that involves driving, it's going to be hundreds of dollars a month. If you're in the lawn mowing business and you've got three trucks that you're running, all of a sudden you're saving $600 or $700 a month, you're going to be buying, you're going to be buying tires when you previously wouldn't be buying tires. Free service and Fisher are going to put a mechanic to work who's been working 30 hours, they're going to need him working 40 hours. So all the money that happens with the fuel reduction, we're going to be able to realize in the Knoxville community. So rents are going to increase. Now the question is, when do you as a property owner begin to raise rates? In Nashville, and I've just had my daughter move to Nashville so I can speak in depth about the Nashville market, it's a zero vacancy rate in the, in the midtown area of Nashville. It's, a, it's really a bubble mentality. People are buying houses for $300, $350,000. They're immediately putting them out to rent at $2,200 a month. They don't have a property manager, but the market's moving so fast, they think they can find somebody that can rent the unit, but they can't show it because they're on vacation because it's over the Christmas holidays. We're gonna see the same type situation in Knoxville later this year, in my opinion. We're going to see a situation for those people who want to think in terms of fixing and flipping a house to not do that, but instead to just market the house, do an assignment of contract, get in control of the property, find it, put it under contract, and talk to somebody who wants to have a long-term asset in East Tennessee. Because it's going to be a real good play for those people who want long-term assets. Now, um, so are you talking about wholesaling these? Just wholesaling. Okay. Just strictly wholesaling. <coughs> this is the first time in 10 years you've really been able to look into the future and say that we're going to have a wholesaling opportunity. And that'll be fueled by two things. Uh, not only the fact that people will have more money, but Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, just reduced their uh, down payments to 3%, which is what it was in 2005. So you have a 3% for qualified mortgages. FHA is doing 3.5%. And the trade-off there is that they are just reducing their mortgage insurance premium so they'll be competitive with Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae. So in other words, people will be able to buy a house with a 580 credit score with 3% down in a market that's moving up. So as we think in terms of where the market is going to go, this is the kind of information that you begin to think and internalize when you're reading the newspapers, when you're listening to the news, Listen for the jobs that are coming online. Jobs drive everything, fuel drives everything, and the auto industry drives everything for us as real estate investors in East Tennessee. 